I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. Welcome everybody to the Trust in the Lord Hour. I am your host, James David, trusting in the Lord Manning. How's everybody doing today? Are you trusting in the Lord? You're going to need to. I think that I just want to say a, a prayer for everybody uh, in America that's concerned and engaged because it's been a tumultuous week. Uh, the election this week uh, that took place on Tuesday, uh, as I date this message, today's Thursday, the 7th of November. The, the election took place on the 5th of November. It's been a very trying time. I think most of us who are news people or information people s spent Tuesday night into Wednesday morning uh, without getting any sleep watching the counts come in. But I, I, I would think that just so your pastor can help guide you, uh, that you need to be very careful. Uh, there may be some streams of violence flowing, some misunderstandings, uh, because it's been a very, if you will, tumultuous time. Uh, as your pastor, I'd like to advise you, I know that a lot of husbands and wives voted for a different uh, candidate than each other. And therefore, there is some tension that may even lead later to divorce. Where we're going to find ourselves in the days to come as a result of the election um, has, has been unpredicted and unprophesied uh, in a large sense, except for the tribulation itself. But I'm sure there are husbands that voted for one person, wives that voted for somebody else. And this was a very disappointing election that whereby you just don't, you know, reconcile after that. There, there will be no, according to Trump and, and Kamala Harris and Joe Biden and a ton of others, there will be no uniting of America. America will get more estranged from itself. Um, so I, I'd just like to point out immediately within your own immediate circle that people might tend to be a little bit more violent. There might be, tend, people tend to be a little more testy, if you will, uh, than in previous times. Um, and I don't know if the uh, voters for um, Kamala Harris will ever get over it. I don't know. The, all elections are consequential in terms of people, you know, our candidate lost, you know, we don't feel so good about it. But I don't know if the voters for um, uh, Kamala will ever get over it. Moreover, there has been a stain into our Gen Zers, and those are the young people, I guess. I don't know whether you're 12 years old up to 30 or something. I have no idea. I'm just here quoting what I hear in the news about young people, Gen Zers, who voted for the first time, and their first time vote was a disaster. And I think we need to think about that. As a pastor, I want to prepare our ministry, prepare our outline to prepare for Jesus. I want to prepare people to let them know that the Gen Zers are going to have a bitter taste in their mouth regarding politics, regarding the government, etc. We may see if Jesus doesn't return anytime soon. We may see the Gen Zers who gave a fateful vote, a believable vote for a candidate they thought that should win uh, against a candidate that they thought that had no moral, political, social, spiritual reason to ever be president. These Gen Zers voted for that person, and that person won over against all of their own ethics. So we may see an awakening or a revolution, if you will, among the Gen Zers in terms of their idea of what politics are all about. The old timers, the baby boomers, the Gen Xers, the millenniums, well, the millenniums may be caught in that as well. But I, what I'd like to caution you as your pastor, I'd like to say to you, that the Gen Zers who, all things, you know, being social and, if you will, mundane, uh, out with, out, outside of the prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ in his return, are going to be a bitter group from now on. They're going to be a very bitter group. Um, and they are going to be a group that will not believe in democracy. We have, I don't know, 50, 60 million people now that will never believe in democracy again. Now, you're not seeing that now. I'm just telling you what is coming down the line um, as a result of this election. Because these Gen Zers who voted for the very first time, many of them 18 years old, many probably a little older but never sought, sought to vote, 
but wanted to vote for Kamala Harris. And by the way, I'm not here promoting Kamala Harris. God forbid. I don't want to lose my seat in heaven. I don't lose my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ by promoting Kamala Harris or Donald Trump for that matter. I don't lose my seat in heaven. I don't want to lose my relationship with Jesus to report either one of those demons and devils or she devils. However, I do want to give some contemporary advice to everyone, if you don't mind, and in the aftermath of what is taking place, that the Gen Z is a, is a lost generation as far as them believing in America, believing in American politics. They're never going to trust American politics again. And that is one other thing that perhaps we'll mention in the Manning Report as well, is that there has been a lot of emphasis in the news over the last couple of days that the group that swayed the uh, election into Donald John Tribulation Trump's hand uh, were the Latinos. That's going to cause a problem if that's true. I don't know that it is. I'm concerned about Elon Musk and his, if you will, technological abilities and the abilities to redirect votes. So that haven't been said. So Pastor Manero, conspiracy, the con conspiracy person. Well, let me say this, that the, the fact that Latinos are now being blamed for the election of Trump, and you need to see it from my perspective. This is just Pastor Manning. You're not going to hear this anyplace else. Nobody has the wisdom or the understanding or the prophetic insight to tell you that we have lost perhaps the Gen Zers and the Millenniums to never, ever believe in government again and probably can become more dangerous than Trump. However, what I am focusing on is that these Gen Zers and Millenniums, uh, perhaps they'll be more open to the power of the Word of God. We'll have to see. The Lord has not spoken to me about that, but what he has shown me is that these people will never believe in the, uh, in the process of, of, of electing a, a president ever, ever, ever again. One of the things that I would like to be able to do uh, and I'll tell my campaign manager, and we'll work all of this out as I campaign for the office of the mayor of the city of New York, is to address this situation, address the angst that will be, uh, that will be directed towards Latinos, because they're going to be the ones that the whole world is saying gave Trump the victory. Uh, and how to, how to, if you will, bring Latinos and 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 then black people are black black people as they are referred to African Americans, how to reconcile between them uh, the, the, the the angst that will that will slowly begin to develop. Uh, if you watch the speech, uh, by the way, as I can say before, God forbid that anybody should ever think that I'm in support of Kamala Black ain't Black Harris. I do not want to lose my seat. Uh, in heaven, and I don't want to lose my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. God forbid that anybody should think in any way possible that there was ever a dream or a nightmare that I would ever support Donald John Tribulation Trump. He's the trigger of the tribulation. He's the Judas. I would probably be more inclined to sit down at the table with Judas after he betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ after they stuck that spear in Jesus' side and nailed, those, nailed his hands to the cross and nailed his feet to that wooden uh, oak board, I'd rather sit down with Judas and play a game of chess and enjoy a taco or a hamburger than I would with, to sit down with Donald Trump. So let's be clear about what we be clear about, all right? But what I want to say to you at this present moment is this is that going forward, here's what's going to happen in America, and here's what's brewing, and it cannot be changed other than the tribulation itself, is that the Gen Zers, who are the future, will never believe in an election again. They will never believe in the political system again. They will never believe in the Constitution again. They thought, all things being equal, there's no way that a person who alleged, who, well, not alleged, a person who was portrayed as immoral, dishonest, as Donald John Trump should have won the election and won it by a landslide, that the character of America would promote that. And the spearhead or the vanguard of that character was the Latino people and the Latino vote. 
So you're going to see angst develop. You're going to perhaps see a, a social civil war develop between the Latinos and, and black African Americans in general. And then, of course, Latinos and the homosexual, if you will, tranny uh, generation, because a large number of people are saying the reason why Latinos voted for uh, Donald John Tribulation Trump was because of the liberals, the elitist African-American, pinch-nosed Negroes, et cetera, uh, were pushing this tranny. They were pushing surgical operations for trannies while they're incarcerated in prison. They were pushing and pushing the woke ideology. They were pushing and pushing the whole idea that uh, drag queen shows should be shown to young children in our public school system and that the teachers in the public school system as early as the first grade should start ten teaching about gender affirmation or gender, if you will, d dismissal of birth gender and accepting of a separate gender or gender tendencies that were not male for female and female for male, that that's being taught and that Latinos as a group just had had enough of that, uh, and in spite of anything else, including the immigration statements of, Pope, of Trump saying he's going to deport some 12 million Latinos or immigrants back to their homeland, they would rather take a chance on being deported back to the homeland and 12, 000, 12 members of their sisters, brothers, mothers and fathers and, and friends that they would rather... They would rather see the deportation than see the escalation of trannies, the escalation of gender discussions and teachings inside, which is also a, a, a abject molestation of our youth inside of the school systems. And so what we are pr primarily looking at at present is where America will go from here. Now, right now, the dust has not settled. People are still trying to acclimate themselves to what took place in the election um, and we'll see what develops from there. But the, the, these are two groups I want you to focus on. One is the Gen Zers, the, uh, the younger people, the 18-year-olds voting for the first time, who will never, ever, until the day that they die, ever trust a political system again. There had been a lot of discussion and a lot of, if you will, doubt sown by the Trump administration from the 2020 election that it, too, was a, an election, a fraudulent election, a fake election, or a stolen election, which began to fuel the flames. Now there is, gen, there is bona fide reasons among the Gen Zers uh, and the Millenniums that the election that took place, though it may have been of an original an initial count, that it was not. It was un-American. It was unbiblical. It was unprincipled. Uh, it was. It, it, it was shocking to these young people who wanted to believe in the political system, and now they see that you can be a rapist, a murderer, a liar, a convict, or a thief, and presently doing it, and yet most of America will stand up and declare you as their leader of all things spiritual, economic, physical, racial, etc. So these, that, this group has lost their faith. In other words, you will never gain them back. Now, how they will go forward and what that means going forward. Let's say, for instance, we could just kind of take a peek view at the next election. And if there will be one, I'm not sure that they will uh, in 2028. Uh, and what's going to happen now in the social platforms of America with the Gen Zers, the rising tide, uh, and they're rejecting the, their elders. They are rejecting their elders as hypocrites. Uh, they are the Gen Zers will look at, and there is certainly a large number of them that will look at the Republican Party as an extra as extraordinary hypocrites beyond that. They are not democratic. They are not capitalists. They are not constitutionalists. You can never ever uh, convince the Gen Zers that Mitch McConnell is a is a is a constitutionalist. You can never ever ever. Tupper, t t t uh, the uh, Josh Hawley, uh, Lindsey Graham, uh, Ted Cruz, and a bunch of others uh, within the Republican Party. You can never ever. So we're going to raise up a group of people who will never, first of all, ever believe in the U.S. constitutional uh, election system. That's gone for them. But also, they will never believe in the individuals in that particular rank uh, because 
they will feel that they are beyond hypocritical uh, and, and therefore cannot and should not be involved in making decisions about their lives. Now, by my saying this, I'm simply pointing out the Gen Zers and also a warning to Latinos um, in terms of violence being directed towards them as Trump is then sworn in and began to implement his policies, which he's going to have to implement, of deportation, of ordering assassinations, if you must, or ordering, if you will, legal uh, lawsuits against individuals like Liz Cheney or others that he feel that betrayed him. As these things began to manifest, and the very weight of the, of the tribulation itself began to weigh down on the American psyche, we're going to see um, a, a, a great change in the behavior of America and Americans. So I think it's important that we express this, and I would like to just drop back to this immediately within your own circle, and I certainly want to prepare the members of the Outlaw Church to be more cautious now uh, of anger in the streets, uh, anger on the trains, anger in the uh, in the workplace, uh, et cetera, uh, anger and in the homes, and there's probably going to be an uptick in divorces as well um, as husbands voted for a different candidate than their wives did, and this bridge cannot be rebuilt. Uh, this, the, the principles of choosing why the husband chose the candidate he chose and the wife chose the candidate she chose cannot be repaired. It's irreparable. Um, and so we're going to see an uptick in divorce, a decline in family relationship as well. And the church can forget it, especially the evangelicals. They can absolutely wrap up their sidewalks and take down their signs and crosses and go home because a large segment beyond the Latinos that gave Trump the victory were evangelicals. They can forget it. Uh, it's all over with. Uh, the five-year-old, seven-year-old boy sitting up in the evangelical church, his father is a deacon, and his mother sings on the choir, is astute enough to understand political. He understands who Donald Trump is. He can go online and find out all about it. And the very fact that his father and mother supported Donald Trump, uh, it leaves a bitter taste in his mouth for them and a more bitter taste in his mouth for the church. So there is no future. The evangelicals have no future. Moreover, the Gen Zers is where the evangelicals and other churches as well would be looking to uh, crop or harvest the next crop. And if that's true about the evangelicals, the black church is, is in a black hole. They can forget it. As the black church went all out with souls to the poles, that pervert that raped and made pregnant that 13-year-old girl at the Employment Zone Church up in Baltimore, Maryland. His name is Jamal Bryant. He's a pervert. He made a 13-year-old, and who knows how many sex events, episodes he had with 13-year-olds. Um, pushing Pat Kamala Harris and the churches in Philadelphia and the churches around America, that they have lost their uh, ability to reference as well. And one of the things I can say, though I'm not a supporter of Kamala or a supporter of Trump, one of the things I am gleeful about, I am gleeful that people like Al Sharpton and Michael Eric Dyson and Van Jones and Eddie Glaude and well Barack Hussein Obama, and, uh, Oprah Winfrey and Jay Z and Beyonce and all of that crowd that came out, Eric Clapton even, all that crowd that came out uh, in support of of Camelback ain't Black Harris in the most powerful way and a ton of churches, a ton of church people thousands of volunteers, all of them, but the public faces, the public politicians, the mayors of the various cities, the black mayors, the black, if you will, 
local politicians, all of them have, they have a rotten egg on their face. They not only have egg on their face, but they have a rotten egg on their face. And they have if, if very little, if you have any f influential power. I'm gleeful of that. I'm so delighted that they are not rejoicing. The homosexuals now, and while I'm not a hater, I have prayed with homosexuals. I've raised them up in this church to be men and women of God and of character and to not be sinners. Um, uh, the homosexuals themselves, uh, that what they have done will now find that they're going to have to go back into the closet. Now, this will be a gradual, or it very well could be a tsunami of homosexuals returning to the closet. Because effectively, not that Trump is going to chase homosexuals. I don't, I, he's not going to do that. But what will happen is this, if, as the news people continue to do the autopsy on why the Democrats, why cut Kamala lost, why she did not prevail, is because is that one is that the Latinos and a lot of black men, a ton of black men, just have had enough of these homosexuals Everywhere you look, they're making decisions. They're setting the stages for our children and their education. And it's all perverted. It's all anti-God. It stinks in Bowie Fowler's, worse than Bowie Fowler's toilet. And black men have just had enough of it. They've had enough of these men who are homosexual, who are penetrated, who penetrate each other. They just had enough of them running the world, running the black world, running the black church, running the black business, running the black rap music. They just had enough of it. And Latino men also have had enough of it, and that's what the news is going to report. So at some point in time, you're going to see violence again arise against homosexuals, and perhaps and perchance some of them will quieten down if they're, if they're rhetoric, or, and some will perhaps even return uh, to the closet. Um, so there's going to be a great change. Now, I am not praising any and all of these events. I'm just simply giving a warning that we should now begin to look at people are just thinking, well, there'll be a different person in the Oval Office and, and Trump will, you know, tell us to use bleach again if there's a pandemic that threatens our lives and there is no medical solution to it, drink some bleach or inject yourself with some bleach or eat some horse tablets or that kind of a thing, or that Trump will be involved in such a process as that. But Trump is not going to be the issue here. Trump was the trigger of the tribulation. He will play less of a role than people like the Gen Zers, who is a, a large part of the American populace that will no longer believe in America again. They will no longer believe in the voting system again. They will then seek, if given the time before Jesus returns, they will get, be looking for an opportunity to revamp and to establish an even different type of American constitutional values that the Constitution itself uh, prevails and prevents what they thought as justice. And you can, as far as the church is concerned, forget about morality, forget about justice, forget about talking to these young people uh, that they can depend on the American system and somehow the American, the light of America still burns bright as Joe Biden and Kamala, ha Kamala Harris have said over the last few days. That's over with. If you saw the pictures of those Gen Zers uh, at the uh, announcement and, and the con concession speech, of, uh, of Camelback A. Black Harris the other day, these people are lost. They are never going to be Americans again. And to some degree, I can understand it. While I don't support it, to some degree, I can understand it. Because what happened was unthinkable. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Of all the facts that we've told about George Washington, who said he cut down the cherry tree and he cannot lie, of all the times that we as Americans, whether we're atheists, agnostics, Christians, Catholics, Protestants, or Jews, Muslims, or Hindus, of all the morality we've taught about doing what's right, that lying is wrong, molestation is wrong, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and of all of that has been taught and spewed over the years as a part of the sauces that we put on the American, uh, if you will, meal, it just went down the drain. It, it, just, it just evaporated like a flagellant in, in thin air. It's just gone as far as the Gen Zers are concerned.
And many of the gen, many of the millenniums, many of the, the if you will, I'm, I'm sorry, the baby boomers such as myself, who also lost. Well, they've got their retirement. They've gotten. They've made a lot of money in the political arena. They've made a, a name for themselves. They've got their houses and their mortgages pretty much intact. They've got their retirement plans intact. But for them, the political future is over with as well, and they have no credibility. They have. They they have no credibility. Uh, and someone said that Kamala, Kamala Harris will now be the leader, though she didn't win the president. She, she'll be the leader of the Democrat Party. You can forget that. Someone said wiser. The Democrats don't like losers. So now, the as I prophesied on Monday before the election, that the Democrats will be rudderless. They will be without a leader. They have no one to turn to. And I was watching Morning Joe briefly uh, on Wednesday morning, yesterday morning, to, the look and the scowl on Al Sharpton's face was incredible. It was one I was delighted to see. The boy knows now that he'd better watch it, make sure, count his money to make sure he got enough retirement funds because his run as an advisor to black politicians and Japheth politicians is over wood. The whole thing has fallen apart. And I'm delighted about that. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that I'm against, uh, that, I, that I'm for Trump, but I'm delighted that the whole kitten caboodle has fallen apart. You can't listen to any of these people now in terms of their directions. They did everything they thought they played by the book. Forget about the spirituality. Forget about, if you will, the honor and if you would, the, how the normality of, of, of being honest and hardworking and constitutional. Forget about that. What they now did, they knocked on doors. They knocked on, they were knocking on the Camelback Harris and her group were knocking on 20,000 doors a minute. Al Sharpton a week ago was talking about how he flew out to Las Vegas, how he flew out to Arizona. He had to fly here and to get out to vote. And when they wanted to get out to vote, wanted people to come out and vote uh, for Kamala, they called Al Shady Sharpton. They called him and Al would fly out in his private jet and stand on the stage and say, go vote. And But that's all gone now. That means nothing. It has no influence. She lost. And she lost miserably. And then the other thing, and the final thing, and I'm going to let y'all go, I figure y'all got something else to do, is that the Camelback Harris and with, with all of the black leaders, all the black politicians and mayors and governors that they've been able to scrounge up and Japheth people have turned the urban areas over to these black people and they've moved to the suburbs, so therefore the black people can now become mayor just by the population uh, numbers. But all of these people, what has happened now is that these people have lost their influence. They could not elect Camelback Harris as a black person. And here's the granddad. Here's the, here's the ton of dynamite that I've been waiting to drop on you. They, all these black so-called politicians, and most of them pinch nose Negroes and a lot of homos and trannies and a bunch of other people, liberals, if you will, they could not, now listen to this very carefully, in light of what is just, what is true, what is honest, what is notable, they could not elect a woman as president. Their, if you will, capital is gone. They have no capital. They have no influence. They could not, after 240 years, failing with Hillary Clinton, they failed there, so they got a second bite at the apple when they failed to get Hillary elected as president. They got a second bite at the apple. Um, and so they, they were partially forgiven in as much as that the trade-off was Barack Hussein, the long-legged, half-breed, South Asian, Hawaii, surfboard, coke snorter uh, from out there in Honolulu, Hawaii. So the trade-off when they lost Hillary didn't taste so bad because at that point it was either the first woman president or the first black man as president. So the trade-off wasn't so bad, and their failure to get Hillary elected as a woman and for women in general didn't stink quite as bad as it could have stunk because there was a trade-off of Barack Hussein, the long-legged Obama. But then that failed. 
the second bite of the apple. They got a second bite of the apple with uh, Camelback Ain't Black Harris to get her elected as president, and they failed. But not only did they fail at doing that, that, they, that leaves black mayors and governors and pensioners, Negroes and trannies and homos, this barrel, if you will, of, of distortion, it all come together under one name led by Beyonce and a bunch of other people, Taylor Swift and a bunch of others endorsement, could not get the first woman elected as president. So they're through. They're, they're, they're through their influence, their power, they are through as through can be. Yeah, that is true. That is exactly what the deal is with them. And so now America, 247 years, has never had a woman as president. And the people that allegedly was in charge of making this historic event take place uh, failed and failed miserably. So the credibility of these people is now uh, abs at absolute minus 10 in terms of their credibility. They're through. They, the James Carville can go back down to Louisiana and go, if you will, trout fishing or whatever it is he does down in Louisiana, and everybody else who thinks they've got extraordinary, if you will, influence over who the American populace and the political... So in a, in a real sense, and while I'm not in support, in a real sense... Potentially what will happen, husbands and wives will divorce. Uh, there will be tensions on the workplace about who voted for who. The other item is that there will be growing sentiments, evil sentiments against the Latino community, and especially Latino men, even though Cardi B came out there and, and her, if you will, butchered her speech because of the, uh, whatever it was, that the teleprompter didn't work appropriately there will be increasing uh, interest against, angst against the Latinos. And ultimately, the homosexuals, the trannies, if they don't go, have to go back into the, cor to the cor closet, they're going to have to tap down their rhetoric as somehow or another they are some special group that just deserves all this uh, attention and protection. They're going to have to tamp that down because... A large number of voters in the exit poll said that they had just had enough of this homosexual, enough of these news people homosexuals, these, if you will, um, college professors homosexuals, and they're invading the schools with homosexual teaching in the first and second grade and drag show. They've had enough of it. So they're probably going to have to tamp that down, that rhetoric is going to be tamped down a bit, or if not, just purely go back into the closet. And, and try there to find themselves to be, at the very least, uh, safe about what, where they're going to go and how they're going to. But I, 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 do, I do find that we're also going to find that many people that voted for Trump uh, did not expect him to win. A number of people, and I would say that, and, and by the way, not only did the camera back came Black Harris, did the black, the hemp, the, the homos, the pensioners, Negroes, the trannies, and all the Al Sharptons of the world weren't able to not only get her elected president, but they lost 15,000 votes from what Joe Biden got when he ran as president. They fell way back down into the 60s, 60 million rather than the 70 million. That, that Joe Biden got. So what we're looking at at present is a failure of epic dimensions. Now, I, I would want to state as well, and I said I was going to let y'all go, and I will, uh, but the other item is this, is that those that voted for Trump did not believe he was going to win either. They were shocked that the boards, that the state of Virginia was 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 acting like it did during the time of, of Hillary Clinton's run. It just wouldn't it wouldn't register blue for hours and late into the night. Same thing with the state of New Jersey. The same thing. But many of the people that voted for uh, Trump uh, were shocked that he won, and they were shocked because they didn't think he deserved to win. But they felt that they needed to cast a vote for him. They would rather cast a vote for him than they would for Camelback and Black Harris. But they're just be, you're, you're not seeing a lot of celebrations. You, you're not seeing uh, a lot of celebrations around America because Trump did win. 
You, 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 because it really isn't for the Trump voter. He doesn't really have anything to celebrate. At, at present, he feels he has nothing to look up to. Now, I'm, t I'm outlining to you to help you understand the, if you will, contemporary, uh, if you will, tribulation aspect from a sociological, philosophical, psychological, if you will, constitutional capitalist point of view. That even the Trump voter, he ain't happy. Trump won, but he ain't celebrating. He, he, why is he not celebrating? Because he doesn't believe that Trump deserved it. And he doesn't really know. And there was enough information spewed out there on, in the ether during the campaign that the Democrats were able to do, including Republicans like Liz Cheney and a bunch of others, that Trump was not in favor of poor white folk or the working class white man, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uneducated college, uneducated white man, that Trump really don't give two dams about them either. And that information, though you probably didn't get a much ch chance to look to, and it didn't get dispersed on Fox News, it did disseminate and fall like rain. So you're not going to see a lot of celebrations. You're not going to see a lot of people rejoicing. In fact, the people that marched on the Capitol on January 6th and that have later been sentenced and imprisoned, where Trump got up and said if he gets elected that he is going to set the captive free, he's now backing down on that. He's now saying, well, some of them might not deserve to be. What on earth? I heard the other, that the other day, and I said, well, you know, I know who Trump is. I know he has no character. He has no, if you will, he, there's not an ounce of truth in the boy. If you were to give Trump uh, all the money on the world and say, speak the truth. He couldn't do it. He's incapable to do it. His father is the father of a lie. He's the son of a lie. Trump is the son of a lie. But even now, the people that are locked away in jail uh, because they rioted for Trump, and that's what they did. They tried to overthrow the election in 2020 and in, in, uh, in, in January 6th, and that's what they did. Uh, now sitting in a jail cell, feeling pretty much like Puff Daddy. Don't know if they're going to get out. Because Trump is back down even just on yesterday when he was asked about the matter of whether or not he would release all the January 6th people that he called them hostages. Uh, now he's questioning whether or not. So it's going to be very interesting. And to discover why Trump will not let them, many of them are anti-Trump as well, because they felt that Trump led them to Washington, deceived them, and they took the brunt of the punishment of Trump, lost their families, their daughters, teenage daughters getting pregnant because father ain't home. The wife is running around with some other man because her, the husband's locked away in jail for sucking up to somebody like Trump. So it's a mess out here. If you don't mind my mind, it is a mess out here. And it's only going to get worse. So I thought as a good pastor and a good shepherd, it would be the appropriate thing for me to do to pull your coat to all of these things to give you warning. It's just going to get worse. But it's the tribulation, stupid. It is the tribulation. What did you expect? And, and haven't you been listening? Where have you been? Haven't I been telling you day after day, 10 times a day that we're in the tribulation and Jesus is going to return to the community formerly known as Harlem, but God has changed the name of this community to Atla. Didn't I tell you that three years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, 10 years ago? Haven't I told you? So what have you been listening to? So American Bob Dylan's statement has nothing to look up to anymore. We, we can't look up to our president anymore. You know, I was greatly impressed. I was sitting there in a, in a pot-bellied stove school down in Panthers over North Carolina. I was barefoot with a pair of what we call galluses on the uh, pants on. We had the clip up here in the pants. It was all one suit. And I was sitting there, and the teacher was telling me, the teacher was telling me about George Washington, our first president, said he could not lie. Somebody asked him, did you cut down a cherry tree? Because I've never seen a cherry tree, and I've been around a whole lot of trees. But did you cut down a cherry tree? And George Washington said, no, I did not cut down the cherry. No, yes, I did cut down the cherry tree and had the hatchet in his hand. Well, any fool could have seen he was the one that did it. I don't know if he did it, but we promoted our presidents as honest. We promoted our presidents as noble people. Even George Washington himself, who could have remained president for 
eons decided at the second term that he would give it up and let somebody else step into the plate and let somebody else take the country for all oh, that's gone. <laughs> it's gone like Willie in the raising of the raising in the sun movie where Sidney Portier had given his father's death benefit money to Willie who claimed they had a deal, could make $100,000, would meet him at the Chicago train station and Sidney Portier went there early that morning and waited all day and all night and Willie never showed up and he came home and told his mama, Willie's gone, <laughs> Willie's gone, and that $10,000 was gone. And back in those days, you're talking the 1950, $10,000 tantamount out to a million dollars of black families trying to move out out of the hood into the suburbs as, as a raising in the sun. But respect for the presidency is gone. It is gone. Respect for the church. Brothers, I can tell you this right now, it's gone. The black church ain't got no credibility. Then the other thing is, is that both Obama with his lying self and Jamal Bryant and Spike Lee and Magic Johnson were scolding the black man. They were scolding, yeah. Skull and the black man talking about y'all ain't acting like a brother. Y'all done been drinking the Kool-Aid. Y'all don't want to support a woman. Woman taught you to read. Woman taught you how to this, that, and that. They scold the black man. So it's over with everybody. It's all over with. The, the black man has been scolded by other black leaders. Spike Lee, you better watch it, boy. When you step out and you too, Jamal Bryant and the rest of y'all, Better watch it for scolding the black man. You scolding the black, that just determined the black man not to vote for, for Kamala. So uh, essentially, faith in the American Constitution that I'm here today um, in the presidency is gone. It's deader than a doorknob. It's history, and it cannot be resurrected. So not to talk about what Trump's policies are going to be, I could care less. But what I do want you to know that even Trump cannot raise uh, respect and love and admiration for the flag again. It's gone. It's gone. It's just gone. And it ain't never coming back. What we do have is two things, and they may be competing in one regard in a smaller sense, and yet there are other philosophical you know, social, spiritual uh, and the things to be considered. But what we do have at present is that we do have the tribulation. It's coming and we're in it. And Trump is the trigger of it. One is now going to have to come to the understanding that Almighty God has picked Trump as the Judas of our era to betray the American Constitution, to, to betray, if you will, the ethics and morals of who we are as Americans and to align himself with the worst of political idea, ideas and ideologies, that he is Judas. He is the Judas of our time. And, and so as a result of that, it was successful. The God's prophecy, the Lord Jesus Christ, a prophecy regarding the tribulation uh, and with Donald John Trump and the election of November 5th that ended in a heart so quickly he could hardly go to sleep. But it has, it has proven effective and has been successful. It Trump has fulfilled. He is the Judas of our day. He is the he is the trigger of the tribulation. I've been telling you that now for the last seven, eight years. And it was successful, more than successful. Uh, but we also have now in the process of the tribulation, we have the loss of the well, a part of the tribulation process is that no one will respect America again. I've talked about the the Gen Zers, but nobody across the pond will expect respect America again uh, because it, it will, America used to be the guiding light, the shining a shining light on the hill, a shining city on the hill. Ronald Reagan, let me get it right, and also let's get back to the teachings of Jesus. A shining city on a hill uh, has lost its mojo. Uh, and so all of that's gone. The respect for America and, and, and going to you be careful traveling to other nations now because like J Japanese people don't want black people traveling to Tokyo and, J and Kyoto and Japan don't want them ma marrying their uh, Japanese women and having black and mixed black Japanese babies. They don't want that. You're going to see a closing of the doors of other nations, including Europe that Americans who now are unconstitutional, uh, 
I think that Boris Johnson, who led the whole idea of Brexit and also had his scandalous idea in terms of when he was when Boris Johnson was indeed prime minister of, of the UK, that did the UK did you lose some of his mojo, but nothing like what's happening. And then, of course, we have the whole matter of the Gen Zers who will be taking over their father's businesses. I remember I'm old enough to remember a group called the Hippies. You don't remember them. You're too young. But they were a renegade group, mainly very wealthy children, came from very wealthy families. Their parents had buku money, and they went to the great schools and smoked pot. Even some of them were told, like Dr. Timothy Leary told them from UCLA to drop acid. They were taking acid, sleeping in a park, having orgies all over every place. In their 18, 19, and 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, 30, and then finally at about 30, 31, 32, all that played out. They put on a Brooks Brothers suit, a pair of wing toe shoes, and a striped necktie and wanted to take over their father's business. They gave up all that hippie stuff. So, and I witnessed that change, that sea change in terms of American economics, American youth. Where we're looking at now, there's no hate, hate in Ashbury Street um, in terms of one particular place. But we're looking at now an angst that will grow between the Latinos. And, you know, I tell you, I, I hesitate about saying this, but I have my concerns that about the Latino vote because they're saying Latinos and that you're going to have a lot of people angry with the Latinos because they're saying Latinos are the one that gave Trump the victory. I don't know if that's true. But the other thing is that I, it, it's hard for me to believe that all the Trump talking about he's going to de deport 12 million uh, immigrants back to their homeland, that the Latinos will stand up and give him the power to do that. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't want anybody calling me up and asking me if I'm a you know, conspiracy theorist and that somehow or another the vote system was rigged. Don't call me up and ask me that. But I just have a problem believing, on the one hand, that the Latinos were the capital group that actually gave Trump the presidency above everybody else, more so than uneducated white men, uncollege educated white men, that it was the Latinos that put that put the presidency in that boy's hand. Even after he said he's gonna send all their mothers, fathers, sisters, grandmothers, grandbabies, and everybody else back to their Latino land. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But then of course a lot of things that people do in America and then report on the news and politicians then vote for and declare as the gospel and the judges rule on in the courts don't make it sense to me either. But that is a real if I'm humdinger. But I want to wrap up by saying this, that um, the, uh, so we're going to, all the things that we've outlined will surely come to pass. It's the tribulation, stupid. It's what we're in. And we need to be mindful of it. So Learn how to protect yourself. Watch your neighbors. Watch events going forward. And we haven't heard as of yet the response from Asia and from Europe in terms of where the presidency is. But it is wholly and completely unseemingly. And the churches can no longer preach honesty and politicians and devotion and dying for our nation after it was said that Trump said those that died in World War II were suckers and there was nothing in it for them, we can no longer expect our military to be gallant and courageous and willing to step onto any battlefield at any time to confront the enemy and send our sons off to war to defend a nation that would, that would elect somebody like Donald Trump as president. We, we just can't. Gen Zers are not going to send their children to protect the ideas of Donald Trump. They're not going to do it. They just are not going to do it. So here we are. We're in the tribulation. Now, I'm James Avery Manning. I'm the Lord's servant. I don't know if I've ever told y'all that before, and I'll tell you now. I'm the Lord's servant. We're in the tribulation. Jesus has ordered the Holy Ghost to wrap up his work, and he sent me. Uh, to prophesy Atla, the land where the people shall walk barefoot, the land where the Hamites, the people that will rise and will be noble and will be righteous and will be honored, are the Hamites. They're the people that were the last slaves in America and the last slaves of the Bible. And uh, they have now been given, if you will, the final responsibility of preparing the place for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and also to reign and rule with him the 1,000 years that he shall reign and rule on planet Earth and that uh, they shall be instrumental and what Revelation, the book of Revelation, John the writer tells us will be the new heaven and the new earth. So the new power swing now, now that the American Constitution that I loved greatly and still love and will honor to the day I die, no longer has any efficacy, it no longer has any meaning. The office of the presidency has no more meaning than sitting in an outhouse in rural South Carolina where a toilet and water and sewer systems are not available, and you have to go to the outhouse in the middle of the night, can't even read your newspaper. The White House and the Oval Office has less prestige now that Trump is returning than the outhouse. And let me conclude, I'm not an American. I love America. God bless America. I would even punch Jeremiah right in the face for saying, God damn America. No, I love America. And Jesus loves America. And that's why he's coming back to Atla. But the things that we're saying are Judas of sort, and they must come to pass. It just must come to pass. But as the, riot, the powers that be descend, those that have been oppressed, such as the Hamites, will rise and me as their leader. Now, you don't have to believe that, but it is true. I thank you all so very much for listening to me. I'm James Everett Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant.